And I believe that this relationship upon which we built was also strengthened with some of the legislation we introduced. Uh, for instance, our circular economy package. Uh, for instance, uh, the requirements we set for consumer products. And I, I believe this has led to, uh, you can measure it, to savings, uh, quite a lot of savings for, for consumers. The energy consumption of appliances uh, was drastically reduced because of EU uh, uh, regulations. And that, of course, is to the advantage of consumers. And I believe in the way um, you have operated as consumer organization, you have increasingly, increasingly put the consumer in her and his role as citizen in all of this. Not just a consumer, but somebody who is a stakeholder in this change. Because, frankly, in the last couple of years, working on the European Green Deal, I have had such great backing from you um, across the board, and that absolutely helped also to convince citizens who are not immediately convinced that what we're doing is to their advantage. So a big thank you to all of you for helping us achieve those goals, for helping us convince European citizens that we need to learn within planet, live within planetary boundaries, and that living within planetary boundaries does not mean uh, going to live in a cave and munch on grass. Uh, that it is possible to have high levels of um, comfort, high levels of development, high levels of security in society, and still live within planetary boundaries. Another thing we need to do, and there I think this is going to be one of the very challenging things we need to do, and that is look at the textiles. Uh, today, um, only 10% of our textiles are recycled. 90% end up in furnaces or in landfill. That's completely unacceptable. Then, the, many of the textiles are produced in a socially completely unacceptable way across the globe. Also, that needs to change. Then, many of these textiles also um, form a health hazard because they contain enormous amounts of microplastics. And we know by now that microplastics are a, a, a direct threat to our health. There is no place on this planet where you can't find microplastics anymore. In the most remote areas on the planet, in the most um, isolated uh, biotopes, um, whether it's in, in, in shrimp or in, uh, in polar bears or enough, microplastics will be found in our bloodstreams. Every single one in this room, you will find microplastics. So we need to take them out of the equation. We can start you know, with detergents, we can start with cosmetics, etc. But at some point, they will have to be removed from our textiles and, for instance, from uh, our uh, tires, uh, the, the ones we use on our car. So join me in developing a real strategy for the fashion industry, for the garments industry, for textiles, that then, like we did for plastics before, we can prove that we can do really something important for our environment. The final point where I believe everybody will understand that this uh, is extremely important for consumers, where we live and how we live, our housing. I think we can, you know, if, if the, the reason I have to go is that we're still negotiating the plan that we're going to launch tomorrow, which is called Repower EU, which actually is, has three parts. First, in the short run, we need to look for alternatives uh, in fossil fuels uh, for Russian fossil fuels. That should be as short as possible, that period. Then, of course, we need to speed up rapidly speed up the introduction of renewables. Uh, I shan't bother you with the details, but that's something we need to do. And then we also have to uh, rapidly reduce our energy consumption. And one way of reducing our energy consumption is to double our efforts to refurbish uh, our housing. Uh, and, and another way is to start building in a sustainable way, reusing uh, already used materials, reusing natu uh, using natural materials, using uh, better design, etc., etc. And here consumers will play an incredible role. They will have to be supported uh, by public authorities, especially those who can't afford to do this, but it has to become something consumers demand. Not just because it's good for our climate, also because that's one of the very few ways we can actually bring energy costs down. And I'm sure you will all agree with me that the one issue that people worry about today is the cost of energy and the cost of food across the European Union. And it is easy, but also a bit 
wrong and unjust to tell people, well, we'll put a cap on prices or we'll etc. etc. You cannot, you cannot with a magic wand turn high energy prices into low energy prices. What you can do, however, is to help consumers use less energy or to use other renewable energy. Right? I was just in, in the Netherlands a couple of weeks ago where somebody went from a very old house to a new house that was refurbished or was built actually with old building material, had a heat pump, had solar panels. And his monthly energy bill went from over 200 euros to 16 euros. I mean, then you're really making something tangible for our citizens, something they want. And I believe the combination of doing the right thing for the climate, for your children and grandchildren, and at the same time reducing these enormous energy costs is the right uh, way forward. It applies to housing, it applies to transportation, it applies to the way uh, we make choices as consumers. Um, um, what we want to do is to inform and help and help you inform consumers. What I'm asking you to do is to help us to reach the consumers. Uh, we still don't reach enough consumers. You are the ones that could be uh, our intermediaries. I'm at your disposal to do that. For 60 years, you've done a brilliant job. Uh, the consumer bond in my own country, I know um, extremely well. They have uh, not just uh, made test analysis and all of that. They have become, over these years, what I would call a consumer's ombudsman. Is that fair to say that? And I think that is uh, Biuk's main role, not just to represent the interests of consumers, but also to be a true ombudsman for consumers in the European Union, or in Spanish they call them Defensor del Pueblo, which is even a nicer uh, description.